Hey there everybody. So in this video, we're going to take a look behind the scenes and focus on some of the techniques we used in order to pull off the blown away snow commercial. Hey, big shout out to the snowfx.com guys for sponsoring this video. If you haven't checked out their products, make sure and, and take a look. Pretty awesome. It's never been easier to create snow scenes for film, commercials, etc. If you haven't seen the first video in this two-part series, go take a look. Uh, I'll link to it in the show notes beneath. It's got some good content perhaps you'll find valuable. As I was thinking about different ideas for this commercial, I remembered an old poster I used to have called Blown Away, or at least that's what I called it. It was produced, I believe, by the Maxell Corporation, which was a sound and audio company, and it depicted a character sitting in a chair being blown away by a brand new kind of sound. It really was an awesome ad, and I suspect that it still exists on many t-shirts and garage walls today. Perhaps somebody has it on their room still. Um, but I wanted to use that as inspiration, as uh, creative for my short. And yeah, I think it worked really well. And it was sort of my way of giving a shout out to the old creative from decades ago. You know, it's really gratifying for me to take that decades old ad and combine it with these brand new snow effect solutions. It was a lot of fun to see uh, sort of where I could take it using that as inspiration for the commercial. So this piece was almost entirely shot in studio and I will link to the gear that I used, including camera, lenses, lights, blue screen, etc. Uh, that way, if you want, you can get a similar look uh, on a shoestring budget. Let's talk about setup for a moment. So I had limited budget for the spot, but I did have access to an empty garage. So I used that to build up a studio. I used a variety of lights, including LED panels, an old Alzo digital light kit that I had laying around, uh, and got it all lit up. Then I proceeded to hang a variety of blue screen panels up to provide a key. Why not green screens, you might ask? Well, if you're not familiar with blue versus green, I'll just give you a quick primer. Green screens provide a warm hue on your live footage. Blue screens, on the other hand, provide a cool hue on your footage. So we actually wind up using both. Green screens for all the hot, warm footage, and then blue screens for all the snow footage. It's a perfect combination. That said, you don't have to use both for this kind of effect. You could absolutely use just one. It just provides a little bit better of a starting point for color correction in post-production. You can absolutely just get away with using a single color, uh, but it's helpful to know if you, your final result is gonna be warm or cool. So once I had the script all written and the storyboards drawn up, our studio was completed, and then I brought in a crew to help us set up a snowy scene. I knew that I wanted to use a couple of different approaches, including digital and practical snow, as both have their strengths and weaknesses. Something I'll mention about the snowfx.com guys, they went into a lab and created practical snow solutions that are specifically formulated for tight, medium, and wide shots. They look great under scrutiny, and the results, I think, speak for themselves. The snowfx.com guys also created a variety of colors, which gives producers a lot of creative control. So if you need ash and cinder on top of a snow effect, no problem. They've got you covered with a variety of these colors. Some of them make for some very interesting effects as well. Think a Valentine's Day commercial with red snow, or perhaps a green variation at St. Patrick's Day. Um, the colors are limitless, really, and it provides for a lot of creative inspiration when it comes to spots. In a world where just about every producer I know wants to set their work apart with a unique approach, story, look, etc., I do think some of these new products are going to support that. Uh, and enable some really amazing content. Cool stuff. All right, after we had all the studio set up, it was time to roll the cameras. And it took about four or five days of shooting. We took a little extra time just to provide a bit of a safety net. Um, took dailies back to post-production on a daily basis just to see you know, what we were getting and to make certain it was gonna be compatible with the look we were going for. Uh, that way, if there was any in-studio adjustments that needed to happen, then we could do, that, um, do them in, in near real time, as opposed to tearing everything down and having to put things, things back up after we found out, yeah, this, is, this shot's not working. When it comes to the camera, though, it provides a special transformation because things can happen in real time that weren't necessarily contemplated in a script or a storyboard. And that's why I think using a product like a snow effect product is really uh, valuable because practical snow provides for real camera usage. And nuance that might seem like a small thing actually winds up being very important. When I think about the blown away spot, that's exactly what happened. This nuance and working in real time might seem like a small thing, but for this spot, I think it was essential. Uh, let me dive in a little bit. Right, an example of this would be when Kerry hit the boombox with his fist. At first he did it just to be funny, but before you know it, we were all laughing about the thing and wow, it wound up making the cut. 
And in the end, I think that the spot really benefited, especially from a tempo perspective. Uh, that wouldn't have happened had it been all produced in post-production, right? So there's an example right there of why I think in-camera transformation can be so special. Post-production has its place, right? But all I'm saying is that from a historic perspective, trying to pull that shot off, ad lib, uh, on a computer is a lot more difficult. The nuance would have been lost and the ability to ad lib just isn't really the same. I'm not sure the moment would have ever even happened had we taken a heavier post-production approach. Once we had all the non-snow footage in the can, i.e. the desert shots, etc., it was time for us to start shooting practical snow. The workhorse snow products we used in this production were snow effects, Snowscape and Snow Hold. Snowscape is a non-adhesive product. Snow Hold contains adhesive, and we use both to achieve the look we were going for. For in-studio applications, adhesive will create a bit of a dust residue. Um, so it is highly recommended to have some sort of ventilation. In our case, we had an open door, and it worked perfectly. In order to ensure protection from any of the dust residue, we used plastic bags to cover up our sensitive gear. In the case of lenses where we couldn't cover them up, um, just simple compressed air was sufficient to be able to remove the residue. Once all the prep was done, we were ready to start making snow. We used a piece of equipment called a snow force machine, along with Snowscape and Snowhold Media. It's not necessary to have a machine for either Snowscape or Snowhold. However, it just makes things go a lot faster. So if you've watched the spot, perhaps you'll recall there's a certain point where the doors open and blow our actor, Carrie, away with snow. And we used Snowcap to great effect and sprayed him all up and down his face, back, sides, everywhere, um, chair, etc., uh, to achieve the effect. But in addition to that, we also wanted blowing snow, sideways blowing snow. And some of that was achieved in post-production, but some of it was also achieved, achieved practically using a machine called a snow force. In order to get even more force out of that thing, we wind up using a backpack style leaf blower to get a little bit more of a, of a blizzard effect, if you will. You don't necessarily have to use the machine as snow effects makes a variety of options that are more run and gun and can be applied by hand. The other product that I mentioned that we used is called Snowscape. It's a hand-delivered product that you can basically dump out of a bag to get a drifting effect, and you can make it very thick or uh, as thin as you like. Um, it's great for the wider, uh, I'd say medium to wide shots, and the cleanup is a snap as well. You don't need a machine to apply it, um, so it can be very versatile for that purpose. The advantage using the Snowforce machine, when paired with the Snowhold Media, is it provides a tremendous amount of flexibility for a variety of shots. Putting the Snowforce machine into action is simple. It combines forced air, water, and snowhold media to create a winter wonderland. In order to use it, you'll need a power source along with a water source, and then you combine that with a snowhold media. The machine has uh, controls to vary the water to snow ratios. This allows you to get the snow consistency just to your taste. You can get a whole variety of different looks by using these controls. Anything from a slushy mess to pristine frost on the side of a tree, uh, to covering acres, which is an awesome look, by the way. So as I was contemplating the script and the storyboards for this spot, I really envisioned two different actors. One was Carrie, our human. Uh, the second one was really the snow. And for that to happen, I knew the snow was going to really have to stand up to the rigors of a production. And that's where I feel like Snowscape and Snowhold really shined. It did take a few tests uh, with the machine and his arm uh, to be able to get the settings just right. Um, you'll just have to experiment to, to get your settings the way that you want them. It's just part of the process. Maybe it took us five to 10 minutes to nail. And then once we had it, we were off to the races. Just a quick disclaimer here. If you do decide to spray someone else, yourself, or perhaps an animal, make certain and take the right precautions. It will create airborne particles that should not be inhaled. There are nose filters, believe it or not, that are small enough to fit into a nostril. These are typically used for allergies and during allergy season. And they're small enough that they're not very detectable by a camera. You might consider those as another layer of protection. Snowscape and Snowhold are non-toxic. However, do this at your own risk and make certain to take the right precautions. We wound up dialing in mid-range settings on the Snowforce machine. And that was the perfect combination to blast carry, uh, like the abominable snowman, if you will. I wanted to look like a tree that had been in the middle of a blizzard at the top of a mountain. Um, so that was the effect we're going for, and that's what the storyboards called for. I think we really nailed it with the snow hold and snowscape media. As we sprayed Kerry, our actor, with the snow hold material, his transformation was nearly instant. Um, from my perspective, that's crazy. Coming from a 3D background, uh, if I tried to pull something off in a similar fashion in 3D, 
it would have taken a tremendous amount of time to get the same quality effect. Who knew creating Blizzard-like effects could be so much fun, but it actually was a lot of fun. Blasting whatever objects were in the scene with the snow force made an instant transformation and made everything look like it was in a blizzard. So once we had all the snow footage filmed and in the can, we were ready to clean up. That was about a 20 minute process and primary tool, just a broom. Uh, that did the, the trick for the most part. When it came to Carrie, uh, just a hot cloth uh, seemed to get most of it off him. If you do plan on spraying a lucky actor with either snow hold or snow scape, have them plan on cleaning it up with just a hot shower. We then set out to post-production where we embarked on building a 3D blizzard that would complement the live action blizzard plates. To do this, we used a variety of packages. These include Resolve, Maya, Unreal for Previs, and a variety of other uh, packages for the dy dynamics for the Blizzard. So I laid down a music bed and I used content from Audio Network. Uh, you might check them out if you're not familiar with them. Just quick comment, I am not sponsored by them. I was turned on to them by Philip Bloom, another filmmaker you might be familiar with. Um, yeah, just really quality content, a ton of it, uh, compared to other sites that I found where they've got a lot of content, but it's not necessarily quality. And so this one fit the bill and I think it really complemented the spot. All right, to summarize here, my big takeaways from this spot, one, pre-production, pre-vis is a must, at least from my perspective and my approach. I like to start with the basics. Come up with a good script, complement with some storyboards, use those storyboards to block out your shots, and then you can determine locations, in studio, outside, perhaps a combination of both. The second thing I'll mention is tool set. For me, that was snow effects, snowscape and snow hold. Uh, those items uh, really helped to get, pull things off in camera and eliminated the need to do all the heavy lifting in post. These tools also enabled talent interaction with the snow, uh, which was awesome. Uh, and it allowed for flexible options for me and spontaneous direction as the shoot was happening. So yes, I am sponsored by snoweffects.com, um, but it's not just a pitch for them. I honestly want you to know that this stuff is pretty cool. And I was a little bit surprised once I got into it. Um, it allowed for a lot more flexibility than I expected. And having on-demand snow for a snow spot means I'm not having to chase some random storm somewhere and I can determine my own calendar and my own shoot schedule uh, versus having to yeah, be out in the elements. I love to create this kind of spot. You know, it may not be a $30 million spot, but it also doesn't look like it was done on a small budget. Um, and that's right where I want to be. I want to create value for the client and I want to create value for myself, right? And so both of those things happen with this spot. Uh, and, and snow effects, not to shamelessly plug, but they were a big part of that. And I can see using that again and again in different productions that I do over the years. I can't wait to see what the production community is going to do with some of these snow effect uh, tools that are out there. And uh, yeah, I'm anxious to see yours too. So if you come up with something, leave it in the comments. I'd love to see it. Hey, thanks for sticking around this long. I hope some of it was helpful to you. And now I'm going to roll blown away. Thank you. Enjoy.